Can you tell which of these mathematical objects are tensors and which are tensor impostors? Before answering this question, we need to define what a tensor is and what we mean by tensor impostor. A tensor is just a mathematical object that lives on a space, like space-time or a curved surface, for example, and has a rule that tells it how to stay the same when you change the way you are looking at the space, so when you change coordinates. Think of a tensor as something whose values may change, but its meaning doesn't, no matter which coordinate system you're using. Even more concretely, say you are measuring something physical, like a force, a flow, or curvature, and hand your results to someone who uses a different map of the world, different axes, different rules. If they recalculate your values using the correct transformation rule, they will get the same physical results from their own perspective. A tensor impostor is a mathematical object that really looks like a tensor, especially because of the way it's written, with subscripts and superscripts. But when it comes to transforming it from one coordinate system to another, it fails to be consistent. That's why they're tensor impostors. Their values are coordinate dependent, in a way that breaks the idea of being the same in all coordinate systems. You'll often hear people saying, a tensor is an object that transforms like a tensor. I mean, this phrase is not very useful. I remember the very first time I heard a professor at my university saying something like that, and I'd be more confused than before. The problem is that they are defining a tensor using the notion of tensor transformation, which is weird because if a student doesn't know what a tensor is, I mean, that's why we're trying to define it, right? Then they probably wouldn't know what a tensor transformation is as well. So what do people actually mean by this sentence? Well, let's see a concrete example of a tensor transformation. We want to pick a candidate for a tensor, write it down in local coordinates, and transform it to a new coordinate system. Then we take the original candidate once again, transform it using the tensor transformation formula that we will see in a moment, and finally compare the two results we got from two different methods. If they match, then we have a legitimate tensor. Otherwise, we just detected a tensor impostor. In other words, this is a coordinate-dependent object, not intrinsic, not fundamental. Let's pick a simple, flat, two-dimensional space with Euclidean metric. We can also write it in this form, using the summation convention for matching upper and lower indices. It's important to notice as well that in the matrix version of it, we name the components in the following way. So applying the summation convention for these components, we get that the metric can be written as dx squared plus dy squared. Nice! Now we want to see the problem from a different perspective. We want to perform a coordinate transformation from Cartesian to polar coordinates. The formulas that translate the coordinates x, y into r theta are these. Notice that the space is still the same. The only thing that changed was the grid we picked to measure things in it. The most fundamental characteristics about this flat sheet cannot change during the transformation. We usually call these unchanged characteristics intrinsic properties. A good definition of intrinsic property is any geometric object or quantity that can be derived from the metric, including the metric itself. In simple terms, the metric, or the ruler we use to measure distances, is the most fundamental geometric feature of a space. So going back to our metric, dx squared plus dy squared, we can use the substitution for polar coordinates in it. Okay, but what do we do with these guys now? Sophia will tell you about it. Well, these are differential one forms and they can be expressed in the new local polar coordinates using the chain rule of multivariable calculus. After working on all the derivatives and simplifications here, we find that the same metric written in polar coordinates is this, or in matrix form, this. By the way, if you guys find the concept of differential forms confusing, check out this video, where we break down the topic in very simple terms. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. We put a lot of effort into our videos, so we'd really appreciate it. Back to our example. 
we basically performed a coordinate transformation to express the same identical metric in two different local coordinate systems. But the question remains, is it a legitimate tensor? And the answer is given by the formula for a legitimate tensor transformation. Failing to satisfy this equation would automatically disqualify an object as a candidate for tensor. Let's analyze each term. Gij is our original metric, before the coordinate transformation. In our case, g prime alpha beta is the same metric, but after the transformation. xi are the original coordinates, x1 is x, and x2 is y, for i equals 1 or 2. Same thing for xj, with j equals 1 or 2. x prime alpha and x prime beta are the new coordinates r and theta, for alpha and beta 1 or 2. The expectation is that, after using the tensor transformation formula for the original metric in Cartesian coordinates, we get, as an output, the actual matrix in polar coordinates. If this fails to happen, then we just detected a tensor imposter. We tried it out in the PDF link that you will find in the description of this video, and after a few calculations we got exactly the same result as before. Therefore, the metric tensor is indeed a legitimate tensor. Let's try the same identical thing with this object, partial mu v nu, which is just the partial derivative of a vector field. So the rate of change of the components of a vector field defined throughout the manifold at each point and living in the tangent space dpm for each point p and m. This is a vector field defined on a 2D flat plane in Cartesian coordinates x, y. To make things less abstract, we pick the specific case in which the vector field is this. Since each of these vectors actually live in the tangent spaces at each point, they can be written as this, where vj are the components, in this case either x1 equals x squared or x2 equals y squared, for j being 1 or 2, and partial, partial xj are the basis vectors of each tangent space written in local Cartesian coordinates x, y. Now we can take the partial derivative of the vector field, component by component. After working on the math, you'll find this matrix that describes each of the four possible values of this object, written in Cartesian coordinates. Good! Now, let's transform it to polar coordinates. First, we need to rewrite the vector field in polar coordinates. This is not an easy task because not only the components are written in a different coordinate system, but the bases of the vectors are also written in different coordinates. And as we know from linear algebra, when we change coordinates, both the components and the basis vectors transform. After expressing the Cartesian basis in terms of polar basis, we can finally write the vector entirely in polar coordinates. Now, take the partial derivative of the components of the vector in order to get our tensor candidate. And we find this matrix describing the object we're studying, but this time, written in polar coordinates. Nice! Now the question is, is it consistent with the tensor transformation rule? We need to check it out. After a lot of calculations, we found a different matrix from before. The conclusion is, the partial derivative of a vector field is coordinate dependent. So this object does not obey the tensor transformation rule, and therefore, it is a tensor imposter. The partial derivative of a vector field is not intrinsic to the manifold. This is a table of tensor impostors. And this is a table of legitimate tensors. We really want to encourage you guys to use the methods you've seen here and apply them in order to prove if some of these mathematical objects are legitimate tensors or are tensor imposters. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.